Hello and welcome to this edition of the Inspiring Women series. Um, Infosys turned 40 um, earlier this month and who better to have for this series rather than Mrs. Sudha Murthy. It is my pleasure to welcome Mrs. Murthy on, onto the stage. Mrs. Murthy was born in 1950 in Shigao, the Haveri district of North Karnataka. She completed her engineering from the BVB College of Engineering, obtaining the first rank across all branches and also received a gold medal from the Institute of Engineers. She subsequently did her master's of engineering from the Indian Institute of Sciences with distinction and started a career as an engineer with Telco, now Tata Motors. Today, she is the chairperson of Infosys Foundation has handled 16 national disasters over the last 24 years. She studied in the Kannada medium school till 10th standard, and that's where she fell in love with the language. Her strong ties to the language and people led her to establish more than 60,000 libraries in Kannada. She also strongly believes in creating awareness for social causes and has traveled the world for the same. A prolific writer in English and Canada, her books have been translated into multiple languages and have sold over 3 million copies across the country. She's a columnist in English and Canada dailies with 30 books and over 200 titles to her credit. She's received nine doctorary, honorary doctorates. Some of the awards that she has won include the R.K. Narayan Award for Literature, the Pad in 2006, the Atimabe Award from the Government of Karnataka for Excellence in Kannada uh, Literature for, in 2011, the Lifetime Achievement Award, and the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence in 2020. She lives by the belief that generosity of a few is the hope for millions. Once again, welcome to this edition, Mrs. Muthi. Genuinely a delight to have you here. Namaste. You broke several barriers and glass ceilings uh, as a professional in, in the world back in the day when you um, became the first woman engineer to work with India's largest um, auto manufacturer at that point of time. You contribute, continue to do that in your chosen field even today. As you reflect on your journey, what is your advice for women, especially those in the early part of their careers? I want to tell all women, have courage. People are so scared what others will think. Suppose I do what my neighbors will think, what the society will think. As long as your work is legally, ethically right, and the genuine cause, then have courage and go ahead. That's why I always believe in it. And I've done all these things believing that what I'm doing is legally, ethically right. and it is good for the good for myself and good for the nation or the society. I have done that. Continuing on, on the theme of uh, reflections, given the diverse work that you have done, um, you've also seen women evolve across the decades. What attributes of theirs have changed uh, across the decades? What have not when you look back and see? I joined Injury College in 1968 and I was the only girl in the university in my class. When I go back to my engineering college now, I can see 30%, 40%, sometimes in 10%, depending on which college, we have girls. Women have changed. When I joined engineering college, uh, people laughed at me, made fun of me, and more than me, my father. They said, this girl does not have brain. But look at her father. He's old enough to understand a girl should not go to engineering college, and he's sending it. Today, parents pay donation and send their girls to engineering college. Now, literacy rate has increased and number of children in each family have been reduced. Parents accept when the children say, I want to be a pilot, I want to be a scientist. So that much we have opened up. Our society has opened up for the new challenges. So I feel there is a lot more opportunities without adding any stigma to that that I could see in the last 50 years. Mrs. Moti, you've also worked with women across rural and urban settings. And when you look at uh, how they approach life, are there any differences in, in these two groups? I consider women in rural area probably react or live in, live probably in a real life with a lot more courage and a lot more acceptance than cribbing and complaining. I've seen women Women, uh, you know, in a lower state of the society, in the lowest job, but still acceptance of the reality 
and working hard for that and and enjoying whatever little they have that attitude i have seen more than that what i have seen in rural area is number one they make their own decisions and they have more confidence in that when women make their own decisions in life you know it, it may be small or big and have confidence in themselves that they can do better i began this segment by um, reminding our audience about um, infosys turning 40 and we owe that to the uh, investment that you made 40 years ago i know there's a lot that has been spoken about how that investment has spiraled this and made this such an iconic organization but i have a very different question for you the question is has um, an investor and given the market those days um, as a lady what was your thinking at that point of time what was your rationale around making this um, investment love for my husband i think that's the one answer <laughs> direct answer when i got married my mother told me look you are working your husband is working but i want to tell you something when you are starting your own family always have some money save some money without your husband's knowledge because men normally are spent thrift and in my case mr murthy was more spent than most people so she said keep some money aside and that should not be used for any other purpose other than emergency we should not to buy a how to buy a uh, sari or a gold or anything a medical emergency or some emergency then you should use it and i went on saving 200 500 rupees and by the time murthy started came and told about his dreams to start his own company. Initially, I said, why? We have both of us have a good job. We have a daughter. Why you want to start? Because I come from a very um, conservative middle class family where in our families, either you are a doctor or you are a clerk in a bank or an officer in a post or you are a school teacher, regular salary job. So I was worried about uh, starting a new company because one of my cousins started his own adventure and he became a bankrupt. So I said, Murthy, we don't have anything to watch in a bank in case the company doesn't take off. Then Murthy explained to me what is software. Of course, I knew. But he, because I'm very fond of history, he explained to me historically. He said, when there was the industrial revolution in the West, we did not get the benefit of that because we are a colonized people and British got benefit of that. Now we have come to a stage where we can be legally, ethically earn money and that is the software. And if we, this is a software revolution and in case you want to uh, work hard and honest, be honest, you can earn money. And there's the only chance we have and I want to start. Well, I was not knowing that we will grow that big. But the only thing I realized, my husband is very sincere and is not asking money for, to drink or to while away or to make uh, you know spend money on other things he's asking money to start a company company may not take off or may take off i do not know about his future so the best way is believe in him because i told murti i know you are a very hard working person you know the subject and i believe in you you have a dream he said if you don't help the dream will not come through i said okay in that case i will help you out. So out of 10,250, I gave him 10,000. And because I'm also an idealist, I you know it's a huge money in those days. But still, I gave that money assuming that my husband has a dream and I'm helping for that dream. Not that I will earn a lot of money out of 10,000. I wrote off the 10,000. I, I will not get it back. I'm extremely bad in investment as well as in economics. But this is the first time and the last time I invested with 10,000, right, which gave me a billion dollars or a lot more money. So what I'm telling you is, number one, I have faith in my husband. I wanted, I like, I loved him so much that he will do something and I should help him. Third thing is, I'm an idealist. I felt, okay, let us do that. It doesn't matter. In case we fail, so what? We can come back, he will and we'll take up a job. So that kind of mind, adventurous nature and idealist mindset probably helped, I suppose. After looking at your reflections, I want to move to some of the challenges that um, women still face in today's world. Do you believe that women are unfairly reminded of this need for balancing both work and home much more than, than men are? And if yes, you know, what do we need to do um, as as 
society and as people in, uh, you know supporting them to change that i agree for this point because once as long as they are in school they are in college you know they are probably excel in education they are much more sincere probably much more patient they have they are better managers the moment a lady becomes a mother the whole equation in her life changes the priority becomes the child and when the priority is child then her work balance home office it is hard it becomes difficult and that is the reason that many women leave their job after they become mothers many people you know have that guilty feeling look i'm working i'm neglecting they feel some people feel job is very important because of their financial commitment so they they are divided into two parts and it, they suffer a lot the best way to compensate that number one men in their life they should help them out if it is household work they should say look my mother never used to cook now you should work in the office come back and cook no i will also cook one day i will also look after the child on saturday sunday this saturday sunday i will share the household responsibility that is very very important for a woman mentally and physically behind every successful woman there is an understanding man so when you look at uh, how the w- workplace challenges have evolved what do you think are some of the more important ones that um, we should help uh, women in in solving today when you reflect on what you have done in your career any of them that stand out for you But what i want to advise women who are working and young mothers number one number one if possible if possible take a house near to your in-laws or your parents provided they agree to look after your children okay after certain age in my case you know when my children were seven eight years old my parents shifted downstairs and i went upstairs it was a great boon to me second thing is when children are young they require your help and you may have to do a little bit of sacrifice and adjustment but remember many women leave their job and afterwards they come back they feel very sad because they have lost their positions that you should accept it suppose you take 2 3 years off in a computer industry when you come back your colleagues must have by this time would have been managers and you may have to report to them please accept it if it is there because you have enjoyed 3 years with your children and that is something which you won't get it back in your life so you have to make a compromise when you come back and later you can always do Uh, you know work harder and get a get a better position many times you may lose financially you may lose your career at times but you can make it up okay but you have enjoyed their company you are you have bonded well with your children and that's the reason children language is known as the mother tongue because you are imparting your culture and it's the mother who imparts culture imparts language imparts uh, you know uh, a kind of a devotion her devotion to their chil- her children so if in order to get that you have to give something else and this is the individual decision it is left to you what you want to give do you believe that women themselves hold um, responsibilities and i will come to what men can do shortly but women themselves can do a lot more to support fellow women in their development what do you think are some of the unique things that other women can do Uh, and when you look at how you help and enable uh, a lot of other women leaders what are some of the unique practices that you'd like to share i always tell when i address women group look you have difficulties other people also have difficulties so make a group of like you know if you are a mother your child is going to school in second standard find out in your group who is the other mother so please help yourselves make a group self help group kind of a help group and use that one because you can share your responsibility and you can accept somebody else's responsibility like a play day overnight stay please participate in that you should be open enough to talk to your other female colleagues and please remember when you make a group there are always difficulties there is always non compatibility of the nature but you have to learn to accept it we spoke about the women and sometime earlier you you had the wonderful uh, you know statement that you said behind the successful women there is an understanding man what else have you seen 
um, men do to participate effectively in the success and support of uh, on the development of women are there other things that that we can do traditionally india is a male dominating society over the so many thousands of years most common thing i have noticed that most men do not take their wife success as success okay they get really upset i have seen that one second thing if a wife is a working woman then men may have to make some changes they should not expect they should have trust on their working women their wives i have seen in bpo many boys or many husbands used to creep my wife has a night shift i said so what so what if you have a night shift your wife doesn't suspect the moment you have a, your wife has a night shift why you should creep don't make a separate rule for a man and a woman when she is bringing equal amount of money third point is the in laws have to change their attitude because in our society uh, you know men are more important because they do the work they bring money to the table money to the house when women are bringing in laws have to make adjustment saying that my daughter in law is working when she comes back i will treat her the way i treat my son oh son is tired he should take rest yes my daughter in law is tired she should take rest do not expect your daughter in law to be perfect housewife as well as a perfect working woman after all she is a human let me ask you when when you look at your own individual development and there's so much that is happening in the world what do you do daily or otherwise um, to boost your own knowledge and skills well um, i'm really very very busy very very busy because of the foundation work and corona then my writing so i don't think any negative at all and even in corona time i never thought any negative because i felt it this too shall pass i always believe this too shall pass and whenever i feel negative or down i always look at the people on the on the street they don't have these things what i have look at the people who are so hard working but still they are not achieved so i should thank the god look at the people you know who can't even make both ends meet and why i should creep so i always look at the people who do not have and i get energized then i always look at poor people they are my source of inspiration because i was born in a middle class family a daughter of a professor and a doctor a granddaughter of a school teacher when god chose me and gave this kind of a job and money there is a reason why he chose me so i feel it's my duty to help poorest of the poor and when i help i feel nice to myself not to get an award or reward or photo no i enjoy doing that i always think positive help people it makes me more energized think positive act positive i want to really use that as a segue into the uh, more of a rapid fire uh, kind of um, segment no problem with 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 personal insights so uh, mrs murthy what according to you is the most underrated leadership skill lead by example i believe in that lead by example not talking by example not giving lectures lead by example is underrated because children at home if you are a parent children observe you it is not sudha murthy or narayan murthy they observe so how you behave children day in an organization you know you have to always lead by example as a leader i should protect my team and my team's betterment is more important than my myself if that means keep your team always happy as long as legally ethically it is right so lead by example is underrated i feel many people don't even realize it. given that you have such a diverse set of responsibilities such a hectic schedule what's the one must have time management principle or one must have time management habit that you would tell others to to look into or have when people come to meet me everybody wants to talk to me an hour i want to talk as much as i i, I want because why they have come what is the reason and can i help it the moment it is over it may take 5 to 7 minutes people who don't get up but i tell them thank you very much for visiting me i have a next visitor and if possible i will do and i follow what i talk but i will not spend a single minute more because what they think is not important i give importance to time and i will not waste it unnecessarily it's like a goal to me i don't waste it 
so i don't waste time if my whole intention is over i move to the next one and so, second so. thing i don't postpone things whatever is done you know you know it's 40 50 60 jobs small jobs big jobs i will finish everything as if there is no tomorrow i finish it and go let me move to the next next one uh, this is more of a fill in the blanks uh, question mrs murthy you deal with disappointment by and if you were to fill in the blanks i deal disappointments with so what i have lost the battle but i'll win the war resilience is so important the last one if you were to distill all your life's learning into one absolute success mantra if you will that you wish to share with other other women and say there's one thing you want to take away from this from my life this it would be <laughs> this is done by our ancestors 4000 years ago paropakaram idam shariram my life is meant to help others not to enjoy yourself you should enjoy it i don't say in my case helping others is a joy not to spend money on yourself but to help others who are in difficulty and that is called dharma what a wonderful note to to finish on mrs murthy thank you very much for um more than uh making your time the candor and the the simplicity <laughs> with which you distilled all the messages it has genuinely been a pleasure uh, hosting you thank you very much ma'am